Well, with the cauldron lit, the blitz and glamour and Giselle of the opening ceremonies now in the rearview mirror, the Rio Olympics got down to business on Saturday, and that included the opener for the U.S. men's basketball team. Known as much for those who aren't there as it is for those who are, the U.S. roster still remains a sparkling collection of stars. And while they may not wear the dream team label, rest assured there's not a team in Rio that won't find them an utter nightmare. One to 20 favorites to win it all, and even at that, an attractive bet. Team USA's inevitable march to gold began with a mauling of China. Team USA actually fell behind 2-0, took them 59 seconds to score their first points, but from there, the bulldozing was on. U.S. led by 20 after one, by 29 at the half, finished with a 119-62 victory, 25 for Durant, 17 for DeMarcus Cousins, 15 from Paul George. Yi Jianlian led China with 25. 31 of the 38 U.S. field goals were assisted on. Every player but DeAndre Jordan had at least one. The U.S. rebounding edge, 52-29. Team USA star DeMarcus Cousins joins us now. 17 points, 5 rebounds in a 57-point win. It's, it's tough to go deep dive on the, on the win, DeMarcus. I know uh, your defense, the team's defense was on point. Why, why is that being so strongly emphasized by your team in, in this Olympics? Um, I think that's the best way to get this team going uh, with a defensive mindset. Um, we got a lot of talent and guys. We got a lot of length and we got a, and we got, we have a very versatile team. So, uh, you know, with that approach, I think we can get the game going easy for ourselves. And, um, I mean, when you have a guy like Tibbs on your, on your staff, it's, it's hard to go any other route. Mm -hmm. uh, for, first Olympics for you. DeMarcus, how do you describe what it's like putting on a jersey with USA on the front? Um, it's the biggest honor, man. Uh, we have, we, we're representing a lot right now. We're, we're representing our entire country. Um, I think we all are doing that with the huge, with with a lot of pride behind ourselves. And um, I mean, like I said, we're representing the country. Not many people can say they, they had the chance to do that. Yeah, you know, you yourself, I mean, you're a kid from, from Mobile, Alabama, representing the United States of America. I mean, was, was that a dream of yours coming up? Um, definitely a dream, but uh, at the same time, you know, I never thought I'd, I'd see the day that I'm able to do that. So, uh, extremely honored, and I'm taking full advantage of this opportunity. You know, we, we watch the game on TV here, and we see... Kyrie Irving throw the ball to Carmelo Anthony, and he throws the ball to Kevin Durant. I mean, you're watching that happen on the court or on the bench. What's that like? Uh, it's a lot of talented guys on this roster. So, to, you know, see see this type of talent, you know, sacrifice for one another, play with one another, and um, at the same time having fun doing it, it's, it's a remarkable thing. So uh, it's, it's a good thing. You got to be a part of the opening ceremony last night. The, the spectacle that that is, DeMarcus, what's your most vivid memory of the opening ceremony? I mean, walking into that building and seeing, you know, thousands of people go crazy, it's, it sends chills through your body. So uh, that's, that's an experience I'll never forget. DeMarcus, give me an event uh, that you're going to see at the Olympics that you'd otherwise never even think of, be of being at. Um, I'm excited to see Michael Phelps. I, I, I have to, I have to find a way to uh, get to one of his matches. Like, I'm, I'm extremely excited to see him. Cool. Right. Is there, is there another athlete, uh, be it on Team USA or, or another country, that you're hoping to meet? Uh, Usain Bolt. That'll be dope as well. I, I hopefully, I can get a chance to meet him. Mm. How, how about uh, for, for your team? Is, is there been any? chemistry building exercise that's kind of brought I me mean, you 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 play against all these guys and i know you know all of them uh, personally but now all being part of a team is there something that you guys have done as a team to help build chemistry i mean we're hanging together every day all day like it's, it's non-stop we joke we play around all day like it's, it's good times non-stop so uh, i think that's more than enough to build chemistry and hey, what's it like living on that boat <laughs> uh, it gets a little claustrophobic sometimes, but uh, other than that, it's been good. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, uh, uh, America's counting on you not only to bring home gold, but to keep Draymond's Snapchat account in check. So do that for us and enjoy the rest of your time in Rio and soak up the experience. DeMarcus Cousins, thanks so much for joining us, man. Well, the first test drive for the U.S. men's basketball team at the Rio Olympics, and this baby is a Ferrari. 
57-point win over E.G. and Lian in China. What were they playing? One of your geo prisms that you were driving back I think in the day? you might be right, China. With a 1962 victory for Team USA, 25 for Kevin Durant, 17 for Boogie Cousins, 15 for Paul George. USA led by 29 at the half, again, a 57-point win. NBA insider Mark Stein joins us now from Rio. Yeah, Mark, it's, uh, it's tough to really sink your teeth into a 57-point win, so let's just go big picture on this game and get it out of the way. What's the big takeaway from this win? Well, it's the defense that they play, and it's probably going to be the big takeaway after every win because that's quickly become this team's identity, even within... USA basketball circles, they talk about the fact that already this team has established itself as, as really the best defensive team they've ever had. They've got two great goalies in DeMarcus Cousins and DeAndre Jordan, and they just have length and athleticism everywhere else, all over the floor, to just cause havoc. And you have to feel sorry for China. They've had to deal with this now three times in the space of just over two weeks. They played the two exhibition games in California in late July. And I, I think China has to be thrilled <laughs> that they don't have to see this team now for three years, not until they host the FIBA World Cup in 2019. I am sure they are quite sick of every time they turn a corner and there's just more length and athleticism waiting for them. And the United States can do that to everybody. I mean, th they actually find defense fun, which, again, I think is going to be this team's signature in this team's identity interesting you know we've seen a lot of china we've seen a lot of nigeria and venezuela as well obviously not the marquee teams in the world but this is a different go round in international play i mean usa is the is the the major favorite in this tournament unlike years past when they've only been the favorite um is is there any danger mark of overconfidence setting in i'm sure that Mike Krzyzewski is going to be telling his players that and trying to keep them grounded. Just within the last two weeks, I've heard Coach K say he worries like any coach does. He told me the other day when they first got to Rio, I'm nervous. But he, look, he's probably a better diplomat even than, than he is a coach. He knows the right messaging to try to keep these guys from getting carried away. But the, the honest truth here, Kevin, is... And I'm a huge fan of international basketball. I love doing the Olympics or the World Cup and just following Team USA to these various points in the world. Unfortunately, I feel like the gap at the top, it's gotten wider. You know, you would have thought the Dream Team came in in 1992 and the gap would steadily shrink. I think at the bottom, you know, the teams in that 8 to 12 range, certainly they're getting closer to the United States than they were when the Dream Teamers showed up in 92 but Spain, Argentina, the hosts, Brazil, these teams have all aged significantly. And France, a lot of people came in here, came into this tournament thinking France has the most athleticism, the best starting five to counter the United States. They got crushed today in their opener by Australia, and they look like a mess, completely disjointed. So if France, one of the presumed top two challengers, along with Spain, can look this bad in the opener, I just don't see anyone who is going to come close to really giving the United States a scare. Just don't see it. Yeah, 2004, the loss to Argentina was stunning. It would be an utter miracle uh, for the U.S. to lose in these games, but we shall see it play out over the next two weeks. Mark Stein joining us tonight on SportsCenter.